Okay, we're going to go ahead and make fire today using the fire plow method. We've got two fire plows here. One up on the top is Sotal, and both the fireboard and the plow. One on the bottom is Yucca, both the fireboard and the plow. And we'll take a close look at those in a minute. The uh, fire plow method is a method of fire making that comes from uh, Southeast Asia all the way to Polynesia, Hawaii, and uh, it works pretty good. We're going to go ahead and do a demonstration on that and uh, show you some close ups of these tools. So you can use just about any wood to make your fire plow with, but softer woods are generally better. This is Sotal, and it's probably the best wood you can get here in uh, North America. And uh, another good wood that I just tried out for the first time here is Yucca. And this works really well also. Very, very soft though. It's much softer than the Sotal, and the interior is very spongy, but the exterior has a pretty good solid core to it. And uh, using the tip for the plow and the base for your fireboard, you can get pretty good results. Now, also, you can use uh, hibiscus. That's the material that was typically used in like Samoa and Hawaii and, and uh, Southeast Asia. Um, cedar works well, juniper, um, but preferably the soft woods. I'm sure you could probably do it with the harder woods, but you're going to have to work a lot harder. Now, on both Sotal above and the Yucca below, you don't want to use the interior, it's just too soft. Even the Sotal, you can get by with it, but it tends to be a little soft, I think. And I much prefer the exterior part of the, uh, of the plant for uh, the fireboard. Now the plow is typically cut in an angle like this, right around 45 degrees. And it's important to have this beveled back over here as well, because this little part right here is what moves the punk or the, uh, the dust and collects it up into a pile. So if you don't have that, the dust will simply jump over the top of this and it won't really collect the way you want it to. So this is pretty much the shape that you want on your tools. And I like my trough typically to be, oh, I guess that's about five or six inches, maybe less. And then the actual portion that I work toward the end is probably only four inches, something like that. And here's the example on the yucca. You can see the, uh, the length of the trough. On the yucca, you're probably only going to get one fire per trough. It's just too soft and it wears right through it. On the soda, I can get three or four fires per trough, but at some point it does wear down into the softer interior and it'll go right through it, like you see right here. When that happens, I just go ahead and make another trough adjacent to it and I just continue to work on down the, uh, down the length of the thing. So what happens here, the plow interacts with the trough creates a lot of friction and it slides the dust all the way down here into this area and that's where your glowing ember will finally uh, take root right in that area right there. Sometimes it gets stuck in there and when you turn it over to dump it into your uh, tinder bundle it won't come out so you may need to tap it or use a knife or whatever. Now the other thing is as this starts to get deeper and deeper the next time you go to use it it's going to be too deep 
and then it's going to smother your coal. So what you need to do is just take a knife and plane that down a little bit or you can use a rasp, whatever you want to use, until you shallow out that trough and then it'll be suitable for another fire until it gets too deep. This has about one or two more fires in it right here. Now my yucca plow is a little bit thicker and rounder than my sotal plow and that's because it just doesn't have the, uh, the strength to cut it into a thin strip like that. Typically the plow should be a quarter to a half inch thick. I think these is, this one's around three-eighths of an inch thick, something like that. Um, this one here really feels good in the hands. This is the first time I've tried it, but you want to hold your plow like this and this rounded end here on the yucca just fits the hand really comfortably and I thought it felt very, very good when I tried it out. So each time I make a fire using the plow, typically it'll end up with a point on it like you see right here. So the next time you get ready to use it, you need to file that back or take a knife, whichever you prefer. Okay, that's about right. I usually like to file or whittle with a knife just along the sides a little bit. Okay, that's ready to go for another, another fire making attempt. Now typically you want your fireboard and your plow to be made out of the same wood types. So these are both made out of yucca and uh, culturally that's what they did. Normally they would use hibiscus for both the plow and the, uh, and the fireboard. You can mix them of course, but uh, it, you know, it's kind of nice just to stay within the tradition and use the same types of wood. That's what they recommend. Okay, here's a yucca stalk on the right and a sole tool on the left. Very similar plant. We're going to go ahead and cut this in half uh, lengthwise and half again and try and make a fireboard for our fire plow out of it. Very soft wood, easy to cut. And here's our yucca stalk cut in half. Pretty soft and stringy on the inside here. But the outer layer, if you look closely, oh, it's maybe a quarter of an inch deep, a little bit more than that. That looks like it's hard enough for the uh, fireboard on the fire plow. Okay, we've cut the uh, end of the yucca off, and we're going to go ahead and make our fire plow out of that. It's much denser in the inside uh, toward the end here than it is down at the base. So this looks like it should work out pretty good. We'll make a couple plows out of these. Okay, here's our yucca plow. And uh, this is the end of the yucca. Shaped it like this to kind of keep the strength on the end so that we have the outside. It's not near as dense as the uh, sole tool. This is just for comparison purposes here to show you what the two of them look like. We got the right angle carved into the end of this thing. And we'll go ahead and make a fire with it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and grind our trough in here. First of all, just flatten that out a little bit. It's just a little piece of uh, sandstone here, flat. That gives me a nice little table there to start my trough. Let's see how that fits. Yeah, it should work out good. Here's our trough. Okay, we grab our fire plow like this. Feels real good. Put it down in the notch or in the groove. Just want to start off pretty slow at first. Just take it nice and easy. Starting to bear down a little harder now. There's our glowing ember right there. We'll go ahead and transfer that into our tinder pile. I'm going to have to tap that off of there.
finally. Okay, just a couple of final comments in closing here. You'll notice in the last demonstration video there, I used my feet to secure the end of the uh, yucca board and the sew tool board in the previous uh, demo also. The reason for that is this has to be good and secure. If it's not, it'll bounce around and then you're going to lose your, uh, your coal. So sitting on it, it's pretty comfortable. Securing it with your feet, everything is rock solid. You have a really good uh, support here with the, uh, with the fire plow and it works out real good that way. All different positions you can use to actually create your fire with the fire plow. I prefer the sitting position. The reason I like it is I seem to get really good control of my stroke in this particular position. Some people prefer to kneel. Uh, I believe that the Polynesians did it in the sitting position or off to the side. Now some people actually will kneel and use this particular position and that's fine. For me, I don't have as good a control on the length of my stroke when I'm kneeling like that. Or there's just too much at play here with my arms and everything. I prefer to sit. Also, there's nothing to really secure the end of this. And uh, you could stake that down somehow or other, and I guess that would be just fine too. Okay, now yucca like this is found throughout the West. Uh, it grows all over California. We've got it in Nevada, uh, Arizona. But the problem, the stuff that we have out here in Nevada that I've seen tends to be a really, really small stock and it's just not large enough to, uh, to utilize very easily anyway for this particular purpose. The uh, sow tool, this stuff grows from uh, all over Texas in the hill country, west Texas, I've seen it in uh, New Mexico. We don't seem to have it around here, the stuff I'm collecting is from the parks, it's a decorative plant and you'll see it a lot of times in uh, parks and uh, decorations around buildings. It's, it's a nice landscaping plant. So both of these woods are pretty readily available if you live anywhere from Texas to California. And uh, I highly recommend you give it a try.